So last weekend I ran all over town looking for this type of tubing. I went to pet stores, hardware stores, automotive, you name it. Nobody has this. The best I can find, and I showed you this before, is this clear tubing. And again, the, the whole idea behind this is just to get enough of an air seal between this cylinder and the barb hose or hose barb on the actual compressor. But I don't need this much of a run and it's not very flexible on a very short run where this kind of stuff is. So lo and behold, eBay and China have saved me. So that's on the way, but uh, for today's testing, I think this is gonna be good enough and I'll cut this down. So the idea behind this right now is just to get this loaded, and I apologize for the noise, but between all the cars having to go by and the lawn services doing their thing, a bit noisy. Funnel, just so I don't spill everything all over the place. I aired that out, cleaned that out a little bit. Open that up, and let's see what we get. Yeah, so much for trying to keep it neat and clean. So, that didn't work. Funnel too small, too small of an opening, so plan B. Hopefully that's an airtight container, otherwise we're going to have a whole lot of pink desiccant. Alright, so there is the tube filled with desiccant. And I was debating whether to... Uh, it's Murphy's Law that there would be a little bit of something caught in there. the opening of the can Murphy's Law all right so that's there I will uh, now set this up and cut and connect this as you can see it's a it's a very small opening and uh, it doesn't have to be super airtight just because all it's doing is sucking in air so I need to make sure that there's enough of uh, an opening at the bottom here and what I'll probably do is put a little piece of wood on an edge or something so that uh, it sits but it doesn't uh, block the airflow or seal off the airflow from down there so you've got air coming in. Alright back when everything's set up for the shakiness but we're off tripod now as you can see, this is how things are set up and connected. So we're going from the air intake and the desk and air intake, and I decided not to cut this for now just to see how it works. Into the tank, we have water flowing, and we're down to 21 and a half degrees Celsius. I've got a vibration meter on there, and then the output is going through stage one stage two and then up through stage three and I decided to make that a vertical filter so that the moisture and oil would be trapped down at the bottom following through to the tank. So I am going to give this a try but not on camera at the first time because everything will go wrong so we'll see how it goes. My uh, microphone plugged in so this particular segment was uh, without voice so I'm going to do a little bit of a voice over here. When I plugged everything in I noticed that these two uh, were leaking uh, at the connection, the interconnect between uh, stage one and stage two filters so I had to uh, disassemble stage two and replace the brass coupler that's in my hand with the silver one that's now mounted 
it uh, provided for a much tighter coupling and when I put things back together sorry for the uh, shaky camera work but uh, I'm off tripod so when I put things back together I was getting a seal and uh, things were were good again so I tested that seal uh, across all three of the filters by installing this end plug so that uh, I was sure I was getting pressure against the compressor so each time I plugged this into one of the stages I checked the uh, the compressor gauge to see that it was in fact going up so that I knew I was good to go um, when I connected everything and then ran uh, for the first uh, I would say 50 bar test which was about 11 minutes uh, everything was good on the tank the compressor uh, as well as the water I stopped uh, when things got up to uh, almost 60 degrees Celsius and when I went to bleed the tank which you'll uh, see here in a second um, I had absolutely unfortunately you can't hear the hissing I had absolutely no moisture uh, either on my hand or that hit the mat whatsoever and normally when I've done this in the past uh, when I first got the tank there was a ton of moisture that shot out of there as well as the bleed screw on the compressor itself so there was absolutely zero uh, droplets of uh, any moisture that came out of the bleed screw so the compressor attached to the inline air dryer with the desiccant seemed to work like a charm uh, and as you'll see in later videos uh, the filters were uh, relatively dry so more to come challenge now is keeping the water cool because my ice has melted and I reached almost 60 degrees a lot quicker than I did on the first fill. So I'm at 1000 PSI. This is the second filter on the stage one. Other end looks not bad. You can still see uh, there's there's moisture and oil there a little bit stage two looks pretty good other side of it no moisture you could smell oil but no moisture so I would call that a success on those two. Um, as you saw, let's see if I can move the camera ever so slightly. As you saw, there was nothing in terms of moisture that came out of the uh, compressor bleed. And then there was zero moisture coming out of uh, the tank bleed. So I'm going to call that a success. I'll uh, reposition the camera here in a second over the uh, the gauge and I'll show you how much air is actually in the tank. So I'm going to install this whatever that thing's called 
close the tank bleed. So hopefully I have a solid line. I'll point that somewhere else so it doesn't shoot at me if it doesn't work. And there's the tank. Let's see if I can get a zoom in on that. So I would say we're right at a thousand PSI and that is it for this morning until I can figure out how to cool my ice otherwise the uh, the fills get shorter and shorter because the compressor heats up and uh, I'll be swapping out the filters. So I call that a success.